Given all the recent rumors out there, and of course a lot of leaks brought to us by Jacob Wolf, in case you guys want to check him out, we have seen a ton of buyouts and some big money offers being offered all around the table for either imports or North American players in general, of which these teams are likely paying millions and millions of dollars. I'm sure you guys are well aware that can be hard to keep up with for a lot of organizations out there, especially maybe one who just made a franchise investment into Call of Duty League for likely tens of millions of dollars as well. Finally, last night on stream or recently on stream it was actually Nade Shot commenting on the current state of League of Legends esports as well as the LCS and the expectations that League of Legends fans have for these organizations and there is certainly a lot of truth of what he has said in these statements and of course once he is done we'll come back here and uh talk a little about it here's the here's the issue with League of Legends esports is every 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 single fan and journalist wants you to win now but then they preach about development of talent. It's win now, develop talent at the same time. It's a very difficult thing to do. Especially League of Legends is a difficult space for a new team. I mean, obviously we went to Worlds our first year, which was incredible. And I think that just gave us unreal expectations of what the LCS and League of Legends competitively can be. And you guys don't understand bro we, we we are we are matched up against teams that have been in the league for 10 years i mean credit to team liquid and cloud nine and clg and tsm we had to come in and build relationships with players players managers and agents other organizations to make transactions with each other it's, it's not as easy as it may seem everybody just wants us to write a check and go and get the best players right away we tried to do that our first year and then people say that we don't care about winning. We have an academy team. We have a developmental team below the academy team. We have our, obviously our LCS main roster. And you can only build a team off the information you have. Like you'll have coaches and scouts and, and, and managers saying like, oh, this is the best player this, in, his, okay. in, in this role. This is who you should be using. Welcome and then back, that player bro. doesn't pan thank out you, you. and people think we're just making ridiculously stupid decisions it's like look man you don't think if we're going to spend a couple million dollars every single year that we're not going to do our due diligence to find it. the best players and, and the best lineup we possibly can you think i'm just blindly spending millions and millions of dollars and just throwing darts at a board hoping it's going to work oh man we have like an entire fleet of coaches and talent scouts that are trying to find the best optimal lineups Okay. Oh man, it drives me nuts, dude. Like, have the you guys ever used a cassette player? Hold you to, man. We're oh, doing our up? best. A cassette? It's yeah. Crazy, man. Like, you know, Christmas. It's crazy. Like, it's like you know, legit videos, crazy. You know, the you mindset that the, player thing? the yes. community has. I just got one of those. That's dope. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I gotta figure out how to use that shit. And certainly I can understand at least a tiny bit where Nade Shot's coming from. Of course, I think in my shoes, and maybe in your shoes as well, we will never fully be able to embrace and understand their perspective, right? You know, until we actually had our hands in it and we're spending these millions, I, I don't know if we'd ever understand the full frustrations that people in esports organizations really do go through. But I think he brings to light a great point out there of all of you diehard League of Legends fans. And I think there's gonna be a lot of points out there to be made of where other people come from when they look at a team like 100 Thieves, especially when you enter what is commonly known as by many of people out there as the number one esport in the entire world. There's certainly gonna be some people out there to say, you should know the heat that you're entering. You should know the fire you're about to step into and be prepared to step into that said fire. Now, I certainly think there's a lot of flip points made by Nade Shot that could be addressed in other esports as well, that being the constantly inflated salaries. And to that point though, you gotta look at 100 Thieves approach in other esports, like maybe that of Valorant, where we have heard they are spending some big money very early on. I mean, even dropping a four out of the five man roster, keeping Hiko, and then signing some gigantic CSGO and younger upcoming talent and paying very, very big money for at least a couple, if not a few of those members. But does that approach work in League of Legends where it's an esport that's been around for God knows how long and the esports fan base for League of Legends is so diehard that then when there is a new entrant, 
I do think they face a lot more flack than in other esports. Is what I'm saying making any sense at all? Like when you have 100 Thieves enter this esport and do very well in their opening year and then face a fall off after spending so much money, it is really, really, really weird to see the responses out there because when you have a new entrant commonly, or at least we have seen with 100 Thieves, they're not too receptive, which is very curious because you have some long-standing teams who have actually done less than 100 Thieves have in their short span of time in League of Legends. And so to Nade Shot's point, I certainly agree. There are a lot of fans out there that have such deferring opinions. And I'm one of you guys, right? I have certainly had my flack for 100 Thieves and their approaches out there, but this is just more so than anything. Whether or not you agree with Nade Shot or 100 Thieves and their approach, it's a very, very great talking point because recently we have all talked about the, um, the fall off of North American esports, not only for LCS, not only for League of Legends, but a bunch of esports out there. And I will say, 100 Thieves, like he points out, an academy team, a developmental team, and a main roster, these are very, very expensive things for 100 Thieves to try and throw their hands at, and they are trying their best to make a future, but it's a difficult tr try to, trying to actually weigh these balances of do we impress the fans now or do we build talent for later? And certainly, as he points out, we are seeing the TSM, the Cloud9, the Team Liquid, the people who have actually been in League of Legends and been in esports longer and maybe have a bit more financial backing to throw the money now. And then we're left with 100 Thieves, who has already spent a lot of money in League of Legends. And do they want to keep on going hand over fist and impress people now or build for later, which is what people keep on talking about. Can North America develop talent for the way, way future? And, and it's tough, right? When you have competing North American orgs who want it now and you're trying to build for later and there's no fans that can see the in-between, you're, you're stuck in some really tough shoes as 100 Thieves. So what do you guys think about that? Sorry, I probably rambled a bit too on about that, but there are so many stringents to talk about with 100 Thieves position and the future of North America for not only esports, but especially the LCS. I like what 100 Thieves is trying to do, but certainly as a fan, it's, it's tough to see three or four years down the line, right? I, I don't know. We live in a moment or we live in a decade or a generation of instant gratification. We want it now. And I, I get where you guys are coming from. I truly do. And that's why I am super glad I am not Nade Shot and I am not 100 Thieves. And speak of the devil, my boy Carl, of course, if you guys have not seen Jacob Wolf on this, as of me speaking, it's been a verbal committing. It, it pretty much seems to be happening, as was expected by Travis Gafford, by Jacob Wolf. That will be Cloud9 to acquire G2 perks. And this situation has been pretty crazy. I don't consider myself a deeply stemming root in the League of Legends scene, but the relationship between perks and Carlos has been very clear and very obvious over the past many, many years. And of course, many fans are are upset for a lot of reasons around this potential transaction, especially when you're bringing the likes of Fnatic and other orgs who apparently had the possibilities. The main thing here being that it was actually apparently Perks's choice to leave G2, as Carlos has now made clear, and it's also very clear publicly these two are very, very good friends, and they are partying. Whatever does happen with the actual details that should come out shortly, they are still very, very close friends and colleagues. As Luca took to Twitter to say, hate has to stop. There is already too much in the world. Not everything is black and white and not everything will ever be known to the public, which is the reality of it. Having said that, I'm super grateful for everything we built in G2 and I couldn't have been more lucky. And by hate, I mean hatred towards Carlos, G2, or myself in that matter. And then Carlos taking to Twitter to say, Luca enjoys freshness and change. We were both together for very successful and honestly fun six years now. It makes total sense that we want to test ourselves without one another. The decision to try out new things is Luca in full he knows he could have ended his career here and this almost runs hand in hand with what 100 thieves does not want to do that being forking forward at least what what could be a few million dollars just to get perks to maybe consider taking on your name and then the salary on top of that which cloud nine has the backing and the want to do i mean guys you got to imagine cloud nine making huge investments in csgo and of course league of legends we have 100 thieves making gigantic investments in call of duty and maybe not wanting to actually fork up even more millions to league of legends of which they've already invested into a lot maybe they want to try and develop more talent for the future and find a better way in doing so than forking forward millions of dollars, which has no guarantee to work. I just hope that when we talk about this stuff, you guys can see both sides. You can take a side, heck yeah, you can hate, you can love, but at least like leave a comment down below why you feel 
the way you feel, right? I love having a talk show because we can truly talk about all the sides of these things. It's just so complicated what these CEOs and these owners go through that I will never fully understand. I simply just try and grasp the concept that we are talking about at hand. 100 Thieves and Shot has now spoken about the current state of LCS and North American League of Legends or League of Legends as a whole. And of course, Carlos and Perks is going to be one of the, uh, the, the sadder parting of ways that we have seen in a long, long time in League of Legends, but also very exciting to see what their futures both will hold. Until next time, hope you guys all enjoy. A lot of videos coming out. Thank you all for subscribing, for commenting, for liking. I truly appreciate you guys. Okay, take care of yourselves. I'll see you back here sometime soon. Bye.